Hello, and thank you for listening to our presentation on the Register of Persons Holding a Controlled Interest in Land. I'm Nikki Duke, Senior Product Manager at Registers of Scotland, and I'm joined by my colleagues Kathleen Morrison, Associate Product Manager, and Pamela Carl, Business Analyst. The aim of this presentation is to give you information about our new register, which is coming into force on the 1st of April 2022 the Register of Persons Holding a Controlled Interest in Land, or RCI for short. We aim to raise awareness of this new register and how it may impact you, for those of you who think they may be submitting themselves, or for your clients, for those of you who may be submitting on behalf of clients. To do this, we're going to tell you about the Registers of Scotland, or ROS for short, as some of you may not be familiar with what we do. We will then go into detail to tell you about RCI, the background, its purpose and timelines. We'll talk about who will and who will not need to register and the components of this such as significant influence and control, categories and the information required. Finally, we will signpost you to where you can find further information at this stage as we are preparing our guidance. Throughout this presentation, we will signpost to the regulations, and these links can be found on www.ros.gov.uk forward slash RCI. However, please be assured that we will be issuing guidance on the register and how to complete it before it goes live. You will then have one year to submit. At the Registers of Scotland, we keep registers of land, property and other legal documents in Scotland. Our main registers are the Land Register and the General Register of the Seasons. These registers hold information about land and property in Scotland and who owns it. RCI is not a register of land. It is, as the name says, a register of persons, and we'll explain more about it in this session. At ROS, we design and build digital services to enable our customers and the public to access the registers we hold. For example, Scotless, which is Scotland's land information service. It offers both um, public and business access to enable searching of details in the various registers we hold, providing information such as property prices and property owners. We are a non-ministerial office of the Scottish Government and the keeper of the registers of Scotland is directly accountable to the Scottish Parliament. I'll pass over to Kathleen to tell you more about the regulations created by the Scottish Government, which we are building the digital system to accept submissions to the register. Thank you, Nikki. So how did this register come about? The Land Reform Scotland Act 2016 gave regulation making power to Scottish ministers to provide for the disclosure and publication of information about controlling interest in landowners and tenants across Scotland. Known as RCI for short, this register is part of the scheme developed by the Scottish Government and approved by the Scottish Parliament to improve transparency in land ownership in Scotland and is a key part of the land reform agenda. The register will make it easier for anyone, whether that be an individual, community body or other party to find out who has control over the decision making process in relation to land and property in cases where it's not easily identifiable from simply looking at the title in the property registers. The register will show who has significant influence or control over the owner or tenant of land and property in Scotland, where this information may not be publicly transparent elsewhere. The regulations are intended to ensure there can no longer be categories of owner or tenant where intentionally or otherwise control of decision making is obscured. In conjunction with other transparency regimes, this means that it will be possible to look behind every category of entity in Scotland, including overseas entities, partnerships and trusts, to see who controls the land. In 2016, Scottish Government ran a public consultation on controlling interests in land and an improving transparency in land ownership in Scotland. In 2018, draft regulations were laid and Scottish Government consulted on these. 
Parliament unanimously passed these regulations in February 2021. The register is to commence on the 1st of April 2022, with a one-year transitional period ended on the 1st of April 2023. We'll now move on to discuss who is exempt from RCI. At the outset, it is important to determine whether or not you or your client actually need to make a submission to RCI. For this reason, I want to first talk to you about who is exempt from submitting to RCI. We can then go on to talk about RCI itself. As noted, one of the key drivers when Scottish Government drafted the regulations was that there should not be a duplication of information. Therefore, those who fall within the following categories, which are subject to other transparency regimes, do not need to submit to RCI as the owner or tenant who are registered in the land register or recorded in the general register of CZs. The first category is charitable organisations. Charitable incorporated organisations, CIOs, and Scottish Charitable Incorporated Organisations, SCIOs, are not subject to the regulations. This is due to the fact that SCIOs already have their information publicly available and are therefore not required by the regulations to report in the register. As CIOs follow similar structures, they are also not required to report. Secondly, we have those who report into the register of people with significant control regime, which is held by Companies House. These cover various bodies, including UK companies, limited liability partnerships, Scottish limited partnerships, and those further listed within the slide. There are also other regimes which create further exemptions. Included are public authorities to which the Freedom of Information Acts apply. These apply widely to public sector bodies, including ministers, non-departmental public bodies, local authorities, health boards, and so on. In each of these cases, the control of, of the organisation will already be transparent through legislation. In addition, there are also certain bodies who report to the Financial Conduct Authority for publication in the Register of Mutuals. Please be aware that a full list of the categories of exemption can be found within Schedule 2 of the RCI regulations, which will also be included as part of the guidance we issue coming up to the go-live date. We'll now move on to talk a little about RCI itself. ROS are currently designing and building this register and will maintain this public register when it comes into force in April 2022. It will be free to submit to and to search the register. It will contain information about those who own or tenant the land and those who influence or control owners and tenants of land. It introduces new terminology. The owner or tenant will be known as the recorded person and those who influence or control owners and tenants of land will be called an associate. Duties will be placed on recorded persons and associates to provide accurate information for the register and update that information on certain events. A person who is an associate can apply to prevent their information from being disclosed on the register if this would put them or some connected with them at the risk of violence, threat of violence or abuse or intimidation. This is known as a security declaration and supporting evidence must be produced. Offence provisions are in place for failure to comply and for giving false or misleading information. There is a one year transitional period before the offence provisions apply. I'll now hand back over to Nikki, who will give you some RCI information. The information which will be captured by RCI is across three areas. This covers provision of information about the recorded person who is the owner or tenant of the land, about the land, about the land which is located in Scotland, and the associate who has a controlled interest over decision making in that land. We will talk more about the details required for each of these shortly. 
The regulations will require owners or tenants to submit to this new register details of other persons who exert control over that land and who make decisions or control the decision making process about the land. In drafting the regulations, the Scottish Government committed to avoid where possible double reporting, where equivalent information is held publicly elsewhere. This was covered by Kathleen earlier on owners or tenants who are exempt from making a submission. The duty to register falls on the person who is the owner or the tenant. This is where in connection with that ownership or tenancy, there are other people who are in a position to actually control, direct or significantly influence the activities of the owner or tenant in relation to the land. Examples of this is where there are other trustees in a trust or partners in a partnership which is not disclosed in the land register or the title held in the Caesines. The owner or tenant must disclose their details in the RCI register. Whilst we will be publishing guidance, please note that we are unable to advise on specific circumstances and whether or not any person or body is in scope. The register is designed to allow those in scope to submit and it will be free to make a submission. It may be that a member of public is in scope and wishes to make the submission themselves, or it may be that they engage the services of a professional to submit on their behalf. In the next few slides, we'll take you through the components of the register, which will support you to make a decision whether you or your clients need to submit to RCI. The points you should consider as we go through this are, do you or your client own land in Scotland? Do you or your client have someone who has significant influence or control over the ability to make decisions on the land? Do you or your client fall into one of the five categories? Do you or your client fall into any other transparency regimes? And finally, are you or your client in scope? So what is significant influence or control? The regulations state that a person is to be regarded as having control if they are able to direct the activities of another person, such as in relation to the disposal, the leasing, or changing the use of land or buildings owned by that person. And they will have significant influence where they are able to ensure that another person will typically adopt the approach the influencer wants. As a general rule, this will not apply to relationships with paid professional advisors, creditors, administrators or liquidators, or to any judge in proceedings involving the entity. To note, for unincorporated bodies, the legislation for this category refers to general control and management rather than significant influence and control. When the register is live on the 1st of April 2022, those who will be submitting will follow this online journey. There will be two account types available to submit to the register. One will be via our online services, which will be used by professionals, such as solicitors or accountants who are submitting on behalf of their clients. The other route is an account for members of the public. Once you have accessed RCI via an existing or have created a new account, you will first be asked details about the recorded person who owns or tenants the property. And here we ask, how does the person own the land? For example, are they a partner in a partnership, a trustee in a trust, or a trustee of an unincorporated body? We ask for their name and a contact address, or if they're a non-natural person, their registered number. The next area of information is about the land. This information will be determined by the property register which holds the land. If the land is the land register, we ask for the title number. If it is in the Saisines, our older property register, we ask for an address or a description of the property. For those of you who are not familiar with these terms and where to find the information, you can access Scotless and our guidance will provide further advice. And finally, we ask for details on the associate. The recorded person will also be required to provide details on those who have significant influence or control over them as the owner or tenant. The information to be provided about the associate is their name and contact address. If they're an individual, their date of birth. I would highlight here that the date of birth of the associates will not be publicly displayed in the register. 
If the associate is a non-natural person, their registered number, such as a company number or a charity number. The date when the association began between the recorded person and the associate or a statement that the date is not known. If the associate is subject to a transparency regime listed in Schedule 2, the paragraph which applies. As was mentioned earlier, Schedule 2 lists the entities which cannot be a recorded person. However, they can still be an associate. This information will be gathered for associates so that they can be identified and engaged with. Where the associate is subject to another transparency regime, their required details ensure that there is sufficient information to enable those registers to be searched to disclose the ownership and control structures for those persons. As this is a public register, apart from the associate's date of birth, the information submitted will be publicly searchable and searching this information is free. There is a 30 day period from the date of submission to when the entries will be publicly searchable and I'll explain why in my next slide. In addition to making a submission to RCI, other functions of the register include the ability for an associate to submit a security declaration. They can apply for this to prevent their information from being disclosed on the register if it would put them at risk of violence, threat of violence or abuse or intimidation. The ability to update details as this is an event driven register, we need to allow you to make changes to information. For example, if you wish to add or remove a trustee. You will also be able to save and resume on the journey as you submit information and you'll be able to save drafts before submitting. You can search the register. As noted, the information will be publicly available. Entries will be searchable on the register 30 days after submission and the 30 day delay is to give time should an associate wish to submit a security declaration and have their details hidden from public view. I'll pass over to Pamela to go into more detail now about the categories of those likely to be in scope. There are five categories which people with significant influence or control are likely to fall into. More detail on these categories will be provided in the examples following this slide. The five categories of owners or tenants of land or property are individuals. These are persons who have certain contractual or other arrangements with an individual who owns or tenants land. Partnerships and persons who own or tenant land or on their behalf. Trusts and persons who own or tenant land as trustees of a trust. Unincorporated bodies and persons who own or tenant land on their behalf. And finally, overseas entities. Schedule 1 of the regulations provides examples of significant influence and control and the exemptions. We'll now go on to look at examples for each of these categories. As mentioned on the last slide, individuals are defined as where property is held by an individual under a contract or arrangement whereby the individual owns or tenants the land on behalf of someone else, or there is someone that can exercise significant influence and control over the owner or tenant's dealings with the land, that someone else would be the associate. An example of this would be where a farmer, Darren, has with the help of his sister, Jill, purchased a new piece of land. Jill has paid towards the purchase price of the land and a contract has been drawn up between them. However, the contract does not give Jill a say in how Darren uses or manages his ownership of the land Therefore, there is no need for Darren to register on RCI with Jill as his associate, as she does not have significant influence or control. The second category is partnerships. This could be where property is held by or on behalf of a partnership. Other general partners will be associates, as will partners in another partnership that is an associate and anyone who has influence or control in another entity that is a partner where they are not exempt. Examples of significant influence and control include where a person has the right to veto decisions about the governance and running of a partnership or remove or appoint partners without application to the court. An example of a partnership that would need to register is the partners of the Dunstan Veterinary Group, Charles, Anna and Ahmed, are the named owners on the land register for the land and property they own. 
John, a fourth partner, is not named on the title sheet, as Charles, Anna and Ahmed and John are all partners with an equal say in the decisions of the group, then John has significant influence over the decisions of the business, including the land or property owned. Therefore, he is an associate. Charles, Anna and Ahmed need to register John as an associate in RCI. As discussed, trusts with associates who have significant influence or control and not party to another transparency regime would need to register on RCI. This could be where a property is held by a trustee or other trustees who do not hold title will be associates. And where a trustee is another entity, such as a body corporate, anyone who has influence or control in that entity, if not exempt, will also be associates. Examples of significant influence and control are where a person can appoint or remove trustees other than by application to the court, or can revoke a trust or otherwise has significant influence and control over the decision making of a trustee or a trust in respect of their dealings with the land. And the following example shows how the trust may be structured and where re registration is required. So Anne and John are the current trustees of the Bloomfield Trust and are named owners on the land register for the land or property which they own. Paul is the trustor and as such has the right to appoint or remove trustees. However, Paul is not named on the title sheet in the land register. In this scenario, Anne and John are the recorded persons and will both need to register Paul as an associate, as he has, by way of position, significant influence and control over the trustees of the Bloomfield Trust. The fourth category is where the title on the land register is held in the name of an unincorporated body, the person who is responsible for the general control and management of the administration of the body will be an associate if they hold an office or other official position and are not also owner or tenant. So just because you're a member of a body does not mean that you will be an associate. An unincorporated body, for example, may be a golf club, sports ground or charity, which is not subject to another transparency regime. The recorded person may be named individually on the title sheet or be identified by the role they hold, e.g. chairman, treasurer, president or secretary. In this example, the title is held in the name of the Village Hall Association and Bob, Harold and Norman are named on the land register. They would be the recorded persons. There is also a committee of office bearers responsible for the general control and management of the property or land owned. The office bearers are not on the land register and are classed as associates. Bob, Harold and Norman would each need to register each of the office bearers as associates on RCI. The final category is overseas entities. As discussed, the RCI regulations adopt a similar approach to the criteria under the people with significant um, control regime managed by Companies House. Person will be an associate if they hold more than 25% of the voting rights in the overseas entity or have power to appoint or remove the majority of the board of directors or management body or otherwise exercise significant influence or control. In this example, GHAB Worldwide Limited is an overseas entity that is registered in the Cayman Islands. While the company is limited and may be subject to another transparency regime, the fact that it is not registered on a UK regime means that it must be entered onto the RCI. As the title sheet is in the name of GHAB Worldwide Limited, this would be the recorded person. The company has two board members, each with 50% voting rights, both board members would be associates. GHAB Worldwide Limited would need to register each board member as an associate. So what does this mean for you or, or your clients? These duties will impact on a wide range of individuals and bodies from a small family partnership or trust to a major pension fund trust and from small sports clubs to large commercial organisations. It's important to be aware that it's coming on the 1st of April 2022 and to raise awareness of these new regulations and duties for those who will need to submit to this. These duties should not be taken lightly. There is a transitional period of one year to the 1st of April 2023 before offence provisions for non-compliance come into effect. 
criminal offence is liable on conviction and a fine of £5,000. To determine if you or your clients are in scope of the regulations, Schedules 1 and 2 of the regulations will help inform you if you are in scope or exempt. It's important to be aware that security declaration for non-disclosure of associates' details can be applied for where there is a legitimate reason. Additionally, there is an updating duty when events happen that affect the RCI entry. For example, when trustees join or resign from a trust, RCI must be updated within 60 days of the changes taking effect. I'll now pass you back to Kathleen. Thank you, Pamela. So what are our key takeaways? We hope that we've helped shed some light on ROS's role to design and build RCI. That we've provided you with the background and timelines which drive the regulations and RCI itself. That you have an understanding of those who fall within scope and those who fall those who are exempt. That you feel more comfortable with the terminology, particularly with regard to land, recorded persons and associates. That the concept of significant influence or control seems more understandable. And finally, that you feel better informed of what will be required when making a submission to RCI. As we come to the end of this presentation, we would like to take a moment to say that we do appreciate that this is a lot of information to take in, especially if you're hearing it for the first time. We are currently working on designing and building the service, which will allow submissions to and searching of the register. We involve users at every stage of the design and not just at the start or end. We design services around people and seek public and professional participation in our projects from day one. This ensures that ideas and feedback from users are considered throughout the process to ensure it works for them. Using inclusive and accessible research and design methods, the public can participate fully and meaningfully. Alongside this, we are also creating guidance and articles to support those who may need to use the service. This information will re be released on or before the service goes live from the 1st of April 2022. However, in the meantime, there is information publicly available should you wish to find out more. On our website, there is an information page about RCI, which includes a short video clip. It also signposts to content available on RCI on the Scottish Government website with links to the legislation and explanatory documents. From February onwards, we are holding further webinars. In the meantime, ROS have social media channels where we have updates available and you can learn more about our other products and services too. We look forward to engaging with you over the next coming months and thank you for watching.